Hello and welcome to the Dreaming and Doing podcast with me, Nikki Raby. I'm an actor, coach, writer, speaker, podcaster and a mum. And in my coaching work, I work with creatives, personal brands, freelancers and small businesses. In my podcast, I talk about success, but not in a traditional sense. I have conversations with those who have built a business from something they love or who have made a pivot in their career. Also those who have built a brand or a job that maybe didn't exist when they were at school and they found a way to monetize their skills, talents and expertise. I've spoken to loads of incredible people, coaches, designers, journalists, app creators, magazine editors, bloggers, content creators, authors, and all round movers and shakers. I asked the questions that you want to know the answer to. So how they started, about money, saying no, saying yes, pitching, presenting, putting yourself out there, even though it terrifies you standing out in a busy online world, growing, scaling and making your work work for you and your circumstances. The show notes are always at nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast and the conversation continues across social media, often on Instagram, my favourite platform, at Nikki Raby. Thanks so much for listening. It's great to have you with us. Hello, in today's episode I'm talking to Kathleen Porter Christensen, who you may know as Triple Passport on Instagram. She's a London UK based travel and parenting writer, a photographer, videographer and brand ambassador, originally from Portland, Maine in the States. Previously a lawyer, she and her husband travelled the world on parental leave and now Kathleen shares her story of raising children who hold three passports each, along with her own unique background. This feels like perfect timing. Next year we've been invited to a family wedding and we will be a family of four, not three, hopefully by that point. And it's all very exciting but slightly daunting doing a long haul trip. So in this episode we talk about building a business out of a passion such as travel or something like that, how you can get started and notice and also there's lots of lovely travel tips thrown in there as well. So I hope you enjoy the episode, if you do please rate, review, subscribe, all those good things and let Kathleen and I know where you're listening, what you're up to and what your biggest takeaways were. That's really important for me. I always say this at the beginning of my talk, if people leave only feeling motivated and inspired, I've only done half a job. I want you to take action too. Enough from me today. Here's the episode. Hope you enjoy it and let us know your thoughts. Kathleen, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for coming on. Oh, thank you so much. I'm a huge fan. So wow. I really appreciate you having me on. Oh, thank you so much. So t- yeah, tell me, because when we met, you were in the sort of transitional period. Where where are you up to now? Where? How would you sort of describe what you do? So I would say I'm a writer, uh, freelance writer, content creator, uh, creative, and... I'm just sharing my story, however I can get that out. And usually it's about family travel. It's about personal finance. It's about being a mom and parenting um, and raising third culture kids here in London. Mm, And you're from the States originally. And then like when we first met, you had a very sort of corporate job. You know, you were doing the sort of the sensible box ticking things. And now you've made this transition into kind of creating your own brand so how how did that sort of work when um how did you know it was sort of time for a change and um yeah talk through the last few years that would be really useful to hear yeah sure in 2015 well starting in 2012 I got married and started talking about having children um bit older and had some fertility issues so really 2012 to 2015 were all about getting pregnant and did that kind of at a corporate job, but already kind of started to feel the effects of motherhood and missing, you know, for appointments and, and started to see how maybe it 
wasn't if I was already having trouble before I even had children right. <laughs> to kind of fit in and to have time and, and get my personal life, you know, done, then maybe things would be difficult. Um, but when I, you know, luckily got pregnant in 2014 and had my son in 2015, I, started to see the world of women who were creating their own thing. And I, but I felt a lot of pressure that, Oh, on this maternity leave, I should be creating my own business and I <laughs> should be. Cause you have so much free time when you're on maternity leave and in those early months, my God, <laughs> you know, Oh, with a year off work, what would I, you know, I should be able to do a lot of things. And in fairness, I did, but, um, because I did a lot of travel, um, but still that was just mo- doing parenting and mothering somewhere else. Yes. Um, it wasn't. Yeah. It's not that thing like where your kid goes, gosh, we're on holiday. Let me just give you a bit of time just to sit and read a couple of books. Like they still need to be entertained. And if anything, they see the sun shining and they want to be out and doing all the things. Whereas you'd be like, oh, I thought we'd just have a, a slow breakfast. No, no. Yeah, never. Um, but the so I think 2015. So that was my first maternity leave. Started going to some networking events. Um, found mothers meeting. Found a few other events. Um, started meeting more women who were doing this. But a lot of for me, I would just get really jealous. Oh. And yeah, it was a huge block. It still can be. Um, but. I, it really held me back actually, um, from feeling like I'd always missed the wave. Um, I'm always too late. It feels like sometimes it's a secret club and on one hand you can kind of, you suddenly, once you start, and YouTube helps you out because they're like, maybe you would like more of this, that as soon as you start dipping into the entrepreneurial world, it's like a secret club and then you suddenly have that awareness of like, oh, but I'm not there yet and everybody else seems to have all of this sorted, which of course they don't, but it can feel like that on the outside. Yeah, and then now I see things, you know, I'm being, I'm, I'm taking a blogging course at the moment from someone who started in 2015 and I'm like, oh, I could have started then, you know, so I still get that, yes. but I have to just remember I am where I am. This is a journey and, um, and kind of, I'm starting to find, not finally get traction, but it feels like for me that I've been starting since then, but really I wasn't always doing the work. I, yes. it was so much more, I was doing the mental and emotional work. Um, and it, it was raising my children. So I went back <laughs> yes. to work. Which is a job in itself. Of course, it's the biggest job. Um, and I, so I went back to work after seven months with my first and really like hit in. So back to my corporate job, started a new company and then I was poached with another company. And so things were like really picking up there. So I just totally left um, any sort of creative stuff behind. I didn't have time to be working on it. And I was also always jealous of people who could do, you know, be like, Oh, just do the writing on the side or like, Oh, just do this. And I, I'm just not someone I struggle to do, to focus on two things fully. Um, I have to kind of, my whole energy goes into something. Um, kind of my work and then my parenting and my relationships. And And especially in those early years where the sleep patterns are just not predictable. I mean, my friend I saw the other day is a newborn and it's like he's dipping out in and out of sleep and then he might want a little feed and then a rot. And it's just, there's no root. There's nothing to kind of hang your hat on. You're sort of really winging it in those early days. Yeah. And that's a really good point that our, the sleep has only really (laughs) since January started to sort out. Yeah. I hear you. (laughs) (laughs) And I still wake up with, we had talked morning routines and I still wake up with a four year old in my bed every day. He does not start there, but he somehow gets there. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. There there isn't a lot of meditation going on or green juice in this (laughs) house either. There's a lot of, right. Okay. I've got to make the switch and change my headspace and like, we're doing this and yeah, you just have to kind of adapt. I mean, that's partly why I sort of wanted to create this podcast that, you know, lots of us are juggling, whether it's elderly parents or, you know, younger kids or just the kind of, 
you know, being in a nine to five and having to make that switch or whatever it might be. Um, yeah, you have to try and carve out time, but it, it can be difficult. Um, did they, when you were in your corporate job, did you think that you would be there for a while? Did you think, um, you would sort of somehow make it work or in the back of your head, was there that sort of determination? Like, I actually really need to give this a go. I hoped that I would build something up on the side, but actually I'd done run all sorts of numbers that in seven years I was going to be able to save enough that I could then switch to doing a creative career. So that was seven years from 2018. Um, and (laughs) so I didn't, so then things changed. So anyway, I, I did in, I was pregnant again in 2016 um, and that happened sooner. It was still with intervention, but it happened faster than I thought it would. And I was really, really lucky. And, and then decided with, because I'd taken seven months off the first time I decided I was going to just take the whole hog this time. Yeah. Take all the holiday, pay, take the parental leave, the shared <laughs> parental leave. I read every single policy I read. I, I just know so much about how you can take leave. And so I took 14 months then um and also so I could get two summers yes <laughs> yes 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 so we're talking about how much I love summer and and where I'm from which is Portland Maine uh in the states is just a huge summer community and it meant I got to be home for two summers um Insane. even though London really is home I've been here 13 years but when it comes to summer it's it's still Maine as home yes. for summer yeah and we were saying that thing of like going back to the homeland when you have your your kid, you want to have that Lion King moment of like, oh, this is so great. And um, yeah, that kind of yeah calling back back to home. So when you had your second, where were you up to in terms of your business journey? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so mostly I was doing Instagram, but really, I mean, it was taking a lot of time, but it was half hearted. At the same time, because I would go to things and people would say, oh, just be organic. Just let it happen. It will just take off. And I think that did happen for a lot of people that did not happen for me. Um, Mine had to be very deliberate. And um, I had to I still have to like grow my I'm growing my Instagram. And it's it's a tool into itself. It's just like you develop any other skill. Yes. And that's what I found. I just have not been an Instagrammer that magically shared things and it took off. Um, no, and I'm always kind of perplexed when that happens. That, And I don't know why, whether somebody knows pe- things about the algorithm or whatever it might be, or you just get that kind of lucky break or something. But I do feel like because this world of Instagram and growing your social media following is so new there isn't necessarily a tried and tested method for that applies to every single person I mean your your platform is quite niche in terms of the combination of flavors like with mine and it's um it takes a while for people to actually get what it is that you're doing yeah and there and there's been a big shift from I'm just sharing holiday snaps and to, okay, I'm educating and I'm providing value around family travel, around London, kind of things you can do with your kids, around personal finance, around parenting and being a mom and, um, and then also raising international children. Uh, so, and creating more of a community there rather than just here's my snap, here's how fabulous I am. <laughs> yes. up, I, I think you are fabulous, but Thank um, you. I but I don't need to see nine squares of it every day. But it, no, you're right. I think it is that kind of it's that education. And I always when I think of your feed, I always think that you share the bits of the curriculum that I missed at school, as in, you know, you talk about pers- like you mentioned, personal finance or actually traveling or making educated decisions about your your life and being quite um uh what's the word sort of um very conscious about it yeah I do try to be very conscious and intentional of how I wouldn't I would say on a macro sense yeah 
um, of taking a step back quite frequently, at least once a month. And I call them state of the unions. Uh, <laughs> and, and with my husband of just being like, okay, what's going on? How are we raising our children? Yeah. How, what does our relationship look like? Um, I hope he doesn't listen to this, but he, um, I'm going to block him. <laughs> yeah, block him. Uh, no, he's, he's lovely. He's been so supportive of this and that's a huge thing. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. But we were having one of these and I just said, when you think about your future, do you see me in it? And, and he was really taken aback, but I, he's like, yes, we're married. What are you thinking? <laughs> And you're like, because I've got a bag packed in the hall, so yeah, exactly. I've got, I've got a train book, so if we can just hurry this along. But just really, like, what does that, you know, what do you picture this looking like? What does our retirement look like? How much money are we going to have? What is, uh, wh- where, do, where are we going to live? We can't ever sort that out. We can, <laughs> we don't. We're both we're two foreigners in London, who like said we were going to leave in 2012. So. Yeah you know, and then things happen here and taking opportunities. And I've loved being a mom in London and in England. Yeah, it's a great, I mean, I've never raised kids anywhere else, but I wasn't raised in London. And I have to say, it's, it's, it's really easy to sort of navigate and you can do as much or as little and you know sometimes I'll say to my kid like where do you want to go today what do you want to do it's an adventure day with mummy and quite often he'll say I just want to go to the local park I'm like oh god really but you know it's you can have quite a simple life here sometimes as well absolutely I mean we stay home kind of in the last few months I've been doing um because also what corresponded with me leaving my job um after I returned from maternity leave it started it became apparent that I was going to be asked to leave and I think I can say that there was an NDA signed um and at the same time my child care fell through actually I had a lot of child care issues and I'd always been someone who'd said like, I don't understand why moms get so upset about childcare. I really, I mean, because with one kid, it really was going fine. Yeah. And we just had him in 50 hours and we paid the bill and we worked two corporate jobs and we were very lucky and he doesn't, my oldest doesn't get sick much and it was all fine. I would cry all the time. Yeah. That I didn't get to see him, but you know, these were the choices we were making. Um, and I was comfortable with that mostly. <laughs> um, but then when, when we started having, when he started going nine to three to the state school nursery of the state school, he would then go to, we then needed to fill these hours and yes. it just all fell apart. It fell apart four times. So it was just this autumn. And at the same time I found out I was losing my job. So it kind of became, all right, it's all becoming clear. I'm supposed to fill in those hours. Yeah. And at the, I was also kind of some opportunities were coming through, particularly with this company called The Points Guy. And I was just like, I just have to go for it. I mean, you know, when things just, it, it clears and you see, okay, this it's is my It's almost path. like all of the bits of paper kind of fall on the floor and you kind of then sort of, you see it for what it is and you're like, okay, so I can't just keep looking at everything being all over the floor. I'm going to have to start picking them up one at a time and looking and then sort of trying to make some sort of sense or organisation of it. And yeah, but how did that, because I guess as well, because you've got that, intentional way of your life in terms of you know you did actually sat down and did that maths of you know I could do this in seven years in terms of saving and this is not to kind of call anybody out or be um, judgmental or anything like that but I would my prediction would be the majority of people would not do that. They would really fall into the camp of, I'm going to go in and tell them I am leaving and I'm starting this. And I think we just watched too many films, you know, where people had that sass of just, you know, doing that and not really having a backup plan. How did you reconcile that way of being brave enough to sort of go for it, even though you had those... Uh, inherent things in yourself that you like to plan and know 
what the plan is. So what made it really helpful um, is that the NDA did come with a little bit of money. Uh, So I felt like I, and so for anyone who doesn't know, an NDA is a non-disclosure agreement. Um, It's basically a gag order. It means I can't talk about how I left my job, Um, but I can talk about the existence of the NDA. Yeah. So. I can say there's an NDA um, and I can say that there was a little bit of money, um, but I can't give any more details, but you can kind of read into that. Um, And and it it happens to a lot of women who return from maternity leave. And and I'm happy to speak to any women about that. And you can also, I'm sure that a lot of your listeners know about pregnant than screwed, but they've been, Jolie's been super helpful for me, um, to me and, and was a great support during that time. So I have, so because of that, I was able to then readjust the plan and be like, okay, I have a year to monetize Mm -hmm. and I, I'm just going to go for it. Um, because I did go initially, as soon as I found out things were shifting at my job, I went on an interview and was like, okay, I'll, you know, before I even leave this job, I'll have a new job is what I've always done. Um, yes. I'll you know. replace the thing that is making me unhappy with the same thing. You know, the amount of times when people are, I know, in my 20s of having relationships, like something would finish. I'll like, I'll just meet the same asshole again. <laughs> that would be great. But I will also say about the corporate world, and as you move a little bit higher, it is very easy. Yes. It yes. is a very easy life. It's mostly men. And they are not, I mean... Some are very, very clever. A lot of them are not. They're just still there because we all left. All the women are gone. And it's just these men that are bumbling around these offices and (laughs) earning these amazing paychecks doing very little. And so I loved it because I could just be, I mean, I only had to operate at, I mean, 50% probably brain power and do well. Um, And and really you could operate on so much less like with what and so with reduced hours and I mean but then the whole FaceTime culture became so difficult for me that why do I sit at this desk from nine to six and not see my children Mm. when I could accomplish this amount of work in four hours (laughs) without a bra at home in the privacy of my own home yeah so I work much harder now um and, and that's why I wasn't making the shift for a while is because it is after, and I, I think it's hard at first to get into that world, but then once you're there, um, and you have the right degrees and you have, you know, the resume and the CV and, and you're there and you have the contacts, it just, it is quite easy to, to sit at a desk, to sit in meetings, to collect the paycheck and, and to like, and to enjoy what you're doing, but you also, I liked that I didn't have to put my whole heart, my whole being into it. Yes. Um, and I wasn't, I was a bit emotionally detached and I didn't kind of really engage with colleagues. I didn't, you know, I had my home life it was my home life. I really at work was very social, but definitely didn't go out for forced fun as I would call it. Um, <laughs> We're all having such a great time. We're build. Oh God. Nightmare. Yeah. Although we did this crystal maze thing and it was incredible. And, and everybody was, showed their true colors. Uh, I thought that was really fun. Actually. <laughs> I think that's a good corporate team building, but I, and I think about, I do think about all the rooms I was in where I was the only woman And I think about how there's no woman there anymore. Like all, I mean, I remember being out at this dinner where we were entertaining clients and I was the only woman in the restaurant. (laughs) And, and so it gives me a slight glimpse into what women of color uh, and so many different groups feel Mm. Um, because still I was a white privileged woman in this setting and what being in this, in this creative world and meeting people who are doing different things, what it's taught me is now my role. I I'm now in kind of different rooms. Sometimes I'm still the only woman, but it's now my job to pull another woman in, to pull a person of color in, to just open and pull another mom in a less abled yes. person at, 
it's because I get my foot in the door from my background or the way I look, however. And then now it's my job to open other people's minds and, and brands minds to, okay, there, you know, you've seen me, but there's actually all these other people out there too. Oh, and, and they go, Oh really? Oh wow. <laughs> I didn't even, Oh gosh. I, do you know what? I feel completely the same. Cause when I moved to London to be an actor, I didn't actually stupidly know anybody who'd ever made any money from acting. I just knew that I wanted to do it. And, you know, I I was not kind of tall and skinny. I had red hair, you know, it was... I, I didn't have the, the, the posh accent or anything like that. And, you know, that was a time where you really had to sort of round out your vowels and be very English. And, you know, I can do all of that because you have to become versatile. But now I really want to share it with people that of how to build this portfolio career because I guess nobody really did that it was you know I went to a comprehensive school where it was a bit like sit down and shut up (laughs) but it was that was the kind of the philosophy behind it and I think that's great that you're really being conscious about that going forward because everybody does need a leg up and um that that sort of leads nicely into how did you start to monetize things like what were your what were your rules? Again, I know so many women really struggle with asking for money or um, everybody sort of stays in the free zone for so long before they actually enter the next zone of being paid their worth or for their work or their time, effort, all of that sort of stuff. How did that process work for you? So it's an, you know, it's a great conversation. I love talking about women and money and personal finance and paying off debt because that was a huge part of my story. Um, I, so I, first of all, am in a really lucky position where I do have a bit of a cushion. Um, So it means I can be really choosy of what I monetize. And so really what in my mind and how I've approached this, um, is that I'm going for really big wins. Mm. I'm not worried about, uh, I could do a sponsored post for a hundred pounds for any sort of product. I mean, that makes me sound like I can get any job. I would be very, very lucky to get that job. (laughs) Um, so, but with, you know, that's approximately what a 10,000, uh, following gets is, you know, your reach a approximately gets a hundred pounds for, for an ad The but that's not what, and, and if you need a hundred pounds, like you should go for it, you should get it and your audience will understand. Um, but I'm looking just at a much bigger picture. Yes. Um, of it's not the nickel and diming of here, here, here. It's okay. How am I going to work with the main Bureau of tourism and do a huge campaign for them? Oh. Um, and yes, you need to do the legwork and do, uh, I need to work on my content. I work on my craft, as they say. Um, and I have, to, I need things and I, you don't start at the top. Um, so it, it's been an interesting mix. I've never struggled to ask for money. Maybe it's because I'm American. It's also, it's also, I've been working since I was 10. <laughs> Like, I, I know, I, I think I negotiated my first pay rise when I was 11. Good. You, when, I mean, you must, cause the, you know, your rates go up at that point for sure. Yeah. From 10 to 11. <laughs> definitely. I went from $2 to $2 and 50 an hour Good. for babysitting mother's helper. I basically <laughs> kept, I would go to a supermarket or, uh, with a mom with two kids and just stop the kids from pulling everything off the shelves. What? So basically my life now. Yeah. <laughs> but but your hourly rate is way more. You're, you're taking that money from your kids. No, I love that of like actually planning for your future because there was a stage like I, I started drama school in 20, uh, 2000 and left in 2003 and it was very much the era of reality TV was starting to come through or Big Brother and, you know, all those sort of talent shows. And I just thought actually... 
yes, of course, I could open up some opportunities if I got in a jacuzzi half-baked with some other dude, but that's not, that's not my brand. No, but it's like, it's not my it's not my purpose for being like I always knew that there was a bigger picture that I wanted to have so sometimes you have to be really strategic in that way and say do you know what I'm not available for that right now or I'm not going to spread myself too thinly and really focus on the end goal and I will say I'm very you know I'm very lucky to have a I have a bread and butter client right now. So meaning I have one client who's paying my bills and, um, and that's just been really lucky. So because I have that, I I obviously need to be developing um, other relationships because it could fall away um, like any sort of, you know, freelance work. Um, But it's given me also, I monetized faster than I thought I would. Um, which has been really helpful, especially as I meet um, particularly other moms in this creative space that say, you know, they didn't monetize for years. Mm. Um, And it's, you know, it's just been a really interesting journey into how, how creatives are making it work and, um, and kind of what people are paid for and what they're not paid for, you know, whether people are, paid to be on a panel but you're not paid to be on a podcast and you're paid to be on and it's the things and that's what I've been learning and I'll just ask questions and I step on toes sometimes because I'll ask someone to do something for free that it turns out that's in the paid category and then you know I've just come a bit late in some ways and everyone's now over exposure you know it's exposure doesn't pay the bills and I'm like oh can a favor (laughs) I've got loads of cake. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, it's that thing. I mean, I guess so. If that's sort of easy, what would you say for people who go? They've maybe got a platform, or they've got a following, or they've got a point of view or a conversation. How would they go about starting to monetize that? And what things would be useful to have in place? Mm, That's really good. So I will say I. So number one for me is developing relationships um, and taking chances. And then when those chances present themselves, you have to, you have to show up. Yes. Um, So what would that look like? Would this, you, you be exploring, I don't know. I guess what I mean is that sometimes people just go, just do more marketing. And then people sit at their desk and they go, hmm, marketing, what does that mean? But have you, has this been relationships that you've met through Instagram or sort of what's been a really good use of your time? Yeah. So I found um, Instagram is an amazing way to reach people, Yeah. to reach people that you would never have access to previously. Mm. I mean, I've been able to chat with, you know, crazy famous people um you can you just catch someone at the right moment when they're on their phone and you know your message pops up and they answer you um yeah and it it's you know before there would have been eight layers between me and <laughs> answers that. on a postcard like can I write into this tv show that exactly. you know they might be on I mean yeah welcome to the 80s and 90s exactly get a signed photo back like yeah. a hand signed photo yeah um, totally that I still love doing that yeah, um but yeah so one thing for me is I am super interested in air miles and points and I used to earn a lot of them being a corporate traveler for my job. Um, and then also I, I just kind of like that world of here's this alternative currency that I can earn. And, Mm. you know, I I love travel obviously. Um, so I had been reading this website, the points guy for a while, and I reached out through Instagram to the founder and the CEO because I saw on stories that he was in London and I sent him a DM and he replied right away. And I said, oh, because I noticed they didn't have a lot of family content on their website. Um, so I wrote and said, hey, like, I want to do family content for your website. And so at the time, I was not I was not qualified to send this DM <laughs> necessarily. 
<laughs> I think some of my best work has come from not being qualified at the time and being in that like, yeah, let's just do it. Yeah, that would be great. Because actually that in, that energy is quite infectious. People go, oh, she sounds fun. Let's go for it. Exactly. And and I think that that does carry you a long way. Um, so the, the founder is named Brian, Brian Kelly. He responded right away and said, oh, we're having a meetup at five o'clock. Yes. At, at this hotel. Wow. And, and in Soho. And I was like, okay. And I think it was three o'clock at the time. And I was like, all right, like, let's go. And I packed my whole family up, like two kids and my husband. And was like, we have to go to this. I know it. Like, I know this is going to be important for me. I don't know why, like, but this is a good opportunity. And really what that turned into was the launch of them creating a UK website. Wow. And within seven months, I was then there launching the family content for their website in the UK. Um, It is such a a sign of start before you're ready because you could have been frozen in in fear of like, oh, but I, oh, I can't make it work. Or, you know, there's always a kid that will suddenly go, oh, mom, you know, you're going to do this really important thing. By the way, I've got chicken pox. (laughs) You're like, you just have to go and make it work sometimes and be there and show up and yeah, do what you need to do. But I will also say I've showed up to a lot of events where that does not happen. Right. Yeah. And I still go. I, I mean, there are certain I, I mean, I can think about a lot of things I'm trying to push myself into right now and that they're just not letting me in. And and that's OK. Um, and that so that was a great that was kind of the opportunity that launched me being able to do this and to see, okay, I, I have this, this one client that I can work with. Um, and I was just going to do that on the side, but it, it happened that things changed for me at my corporate job. So the, when I went to that meeting, it was actually exactly a year ago yesterday, Wow, that meetup. So it really just changed the path. Um, but I still went back to work and in it, um, yeah, I was just on maternity leave and met a bunch of people. And it's just then maintaining those connections. I mean, I don't, no one likes the term networking. Um, but I find it so much easier now with social media to just keep up with people. Yes. When before I used to have to keep their cards and like send them an email or Christmas cards. Yes. Christmas cards. Yeah. Um, and I, so I do think this is, you've just got to kind of get yourself out there and, and in, in person meetings for me has always been the best because I don't actually, I'm still working on my social media and my writing really displaying who I am and being uh, totally authentic. Yeah. And it's not that I'm trying to make it inauthentic, obviously no one's trying to do that, but nothing beats a a face-to-face meeting and someone feeling your energy and feeling your excitement about, about a particular subject or your business. I always thought I needed a product and I don't have a product. Um, I mean, my product is my knowledge, I guess, um, and making connections between people and, and just sharing my story. Definitely. And I think just doing that in a, non-apologetic but not a kind of I guess one thing that I hear is sometimes where at these networking events I hear people half playing at what it is that they're trying to do or they're achieving and they dumb it down because again they're waiting maybe for this magical day where everything's going to feel perfect and sorted and uh, aligned and all those magical things but and so sometimes there's a sense of I'm kind of doing this or I've just started it or I'm not really sure what it is and I think sometimes kind of faking it until you make it it sort of stands in your stead because people need you 
at different stages you know sometimes they can't reach the people who you know go well actually I charge one million pounds per Instagram um, post and they get well thank you so much you know it's not going to be a fit for us right now but the, the landscape is quite wide in terms of the different audience sizes and what you have to offer in your USP so I guess I would really encourage people just to own that as well and practice in front of the mirror even if it seems a bit weird do it when you're home alone obviously but <laughs> Yeah, because you never know when that opportunity is going to come. Yeah, and you know, and how I know you really is from going to events. Yeah. Uh, I think of you as someone, maybe not this, you know, at this exact stage of your pregnancy, but that is at all, you know, I can show up in any part of London. <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 there she is. <laughs> yeah, and I'm the same. I will show up to just about anything, uh, that I'm invited to. And I'm, I'm still, and I'm still begging for invites because when people say like they're invited to all these things, anyone out there, I will come to your event. <laughs> so just Totally. And that's why I'm a terrible like blogger influencer. Not that those are either of my job titles by any means, but I really go for, I don't go to necessarily be seen. I go for the chat and the connection with people. So I guess long term, that really works for me because I build genuine relationships. But in terms of my Instagram, it may not look that exciting. But then later on, you're like, oh, you were there. Okay, great. But um, yeah, so I guess going forward, what what's your plan or what would you like to do more of? So what would I like to do more of? I really am enjoying video Mm. and being, I would like to be in more. And so I really want kind of my kids and I telling our story through video is the next kind of phase for me. Um, And so that's both learning the craft of it, um, and also working with other videographers, some of it, I can shoot the GoPro footage and then I'm now learning to edit, but also having, you know, I can freelance out. It's learning what I can send out to other people to do and what I need to do myself or what I enjoy doing. That's the other thing. Yes. Um, I'm kind of getting more help. I'm having a call right after this to discuss, getting help because as you'll have seen, even just setting this up with me, I'm, I'm just disorganized. Um, I, I will have the macro, I will have my seven year, 10 year, 20 year plan, (laughs) but I don't know. Don't ask me what I'm doing this afternoon. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know what time I'm supposed to pick my kids up. Like I forget. And so it's really getting into the minutia and keeping it, you know, I'll forget to invoice. I'll talk about, you know, money, but then I'll forget, I'll, I'll invoice three months late and other, and then I see everyone else is saying, Oh, my clients don't pay me. I'm like, Oh, I don't even, I'm behind on even asking for the money. So then it sets you back even further because, um, anyway, so I think it's kind of really at a pivoting point of what am I, what do I enjoy most? What makes me the most money? And where is my time best spent, Uh, including, you know, time with my lovely two boys um, who are four and almost two and being able to cut off. I actually think what's interesting about Instagram and social media is that I think I spent more time on it before I made it. It's just more intentional now. Mm. I don't do it in front of the kids. I mean, sometimes, of course, I do stories. Um, but I still just shoot the video and then I put it up later. Um, because it's, I can now, because now being on the phone, being on the computer, because it's my job, I really separate that from when I'm with them as much as I can. Yeah. You know, and, um, well, and I think you only learn these things as you go and you only you almost have to try on all of these sort of states of, you know, you when you first start, you're doing everything and you're 
you're nurturing this brand as like another human being and going, right, it's got to be this and I've got to take care. And then slowly you can start to loosen the reins and going, God, actually, I really dread doing this and I don't want to do it. Or like that book, um, The Big Leap, it's not my zone of genius. And you only sort of learn that by maybe making mistakes or going oh why why did I turn up at that thing because that was never going to be a match or whatever but it it can be really hard to assess those things from the sidelines you have to do it and I think I think that's so true and that also it's just propelling forward Mm -hmm. and with triple passport it's I mean I see trips in the future Um, like I would love to do family run trips or even just mom and child trips. Um, but then if I start really thinking, I can get overwhelmed and think, oh my gosh, think of all the car seats that I'd have to bring. (laughs) Like just something really (laughs) small will make me be like, oh my gosh, I could never do that. And sometimes you go, I like my own children, but do I really want every to be taking care of everybody else's? And yeah, it's. Yeah. But then thinking, okay, like that's you know, step back. It's looking at big picture and actually working with one thing that's been so helpful for me is working with business coaches and starting to invest in myself that way. Mm. It's just made a huge difference because it does help you stop and look at the big pictures and what, because I'm someone who's fine to be planning, but I don't even know what questions to be asking myself. Yeah. Um, because this is just not, the life I originally set up and was working towards forever. It's what I always wanted to do. I always wanted to be creative, but I saw that as something one for rich kids, (laughs) like yeah, that, you know, you had something to fall back on. And then also I saw it as like, it wasn't my number one. There were always people who were better than me at it at any sort of creative thing. Like I did modeling when I was younger. I, I I just was so frozen by fear, did writing, but then, you know, it, and still I can be frozen by comments. I can be like, just, you have to, but now there's so many people teaching how you drown out the noise. Yeah. Um, how you listen to podcasts that motivate you and how you fill your world with positivity that then drowns out the inevitable negativity that you will get putting yourself out there on the internet. Of course. Uh, And also sometimes when you're starting this, especially if you're doing it on maternity leave, you know, you've got all those hormones and emotions and lack of sleep and, you know, trying to figure out this new job of being a mum whilst you're trying to do these other things that it's a real um, leap of faith trying to find out your own, sort of set of tools that are going to make you feel good and I know for me sometimes is when things get complicated or things get foggy I need to strip things back and it means that I'm trying to do too much or be all things to all people and I've kind of learned that along the way in terms of setting new boundaries for people like I used to offer a free coaching session for anybody that just wanted to chat and these days I'm just so much more um I guess I've yeah I've learned that sense of what I have to offer is good and that I need to protect myself in this because sometimes as well when you become a mum you can be the bottom of the pile (laughs) and uh, Mm. certainly as I'm going into having my second child I'm like okay this is about thriving not surviving this time this is about really feeling all the things and still buying the stuff that is is good for me too um we are planning a trip to New York next year for a family wedding just as a final um, sort of question, what would your top tips sort of for family travel be? What are the things that you always come back to, however simple or complicated? Um, what are your top tips? So top tip is to keep a sense of humor. <laughs> and, and alcohol. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, whatever gets you through. <laughs> um, but also to know it's 
I mean, with a flight. So going to New York, that's probably 12 hours door to door. Yes. 12 hours. I yes. mean, because when you, people do that, but it's only, you know, six and a half on a, it's not, it's all the stuff, isn't it? It's the leaving home at the funny o'clock time. It's waiting for the taxi. It's the whole transfers and yeah, it's a lot. But I actually think, you know, 12 hours isn't that long. You entertain your kids for 12 hours. Every all day. Not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, depending on what your work situation is, <laughs> yeah. it could be, that's what you do every day. Right. So I just see it as you're parenting, but it's on the move. And of course they don't have their usual comforts, but I try to create home on the plane, <laughs> wherever we are. Like my big thing is recreating home. I also think so much about what home means and that it is just being with your family. It's being wherever you are. So, but if that for my son and and then it depends on their exact age and what they're into at that time. Yes. Um, So I'll have a four year old, four and a half year old and a nearly nine month old. So, um, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm sweating as I'm saying. No, but I mean, uh, I mean, the four-year-old at that point, typically, if, if you're doing screens, I mean, they can they can watch something for a good portion of it. They can also then do their book. I mean, four-year-old's probably fine yes. with, you know, books and stickers and, you know, whatever they would do at home for six hours. And it's also, ex- you've got the excitement as well of like, whoa, this is a plane or we- we're doing this or that you're sort of, there's so many things to kind of absorb and look at and all the rest of it. And, you know, I'd like to think that they might sleep a little bit, but who knows if they would. They, <laughs> I've seen so many ones with your eldest where you're like, no, he's still awake. Oh my gosh, I know. But he he can become just so overstimulated. Um and it's amazing to me how long he can go without sleeping. Yeah. Um, but my two-year-old, he's very regular with his sleep. So if it was his nap time on a plane, he would nap. Good. Um, and the other one will just, you know, bust through. Yes. Um, but, yeah, it just depends where they're at. So, you know, with a nine-month-old, they could be mobile. They could, yeah. like, my first, or they could not be, like, my second. So that was actually – that was – you know, so maybe you're walking up and down the plane with them or yes. you're exploring the back and kind of looking out the windows. And it, I, with my first, we did a lot of kind of latching and unlatching of the kind of drink carts in the back. Yes. It's just, you kind of need them. All, like, it depends on the flight attendants and the crew. And, you know, if you kind of really are like, I, I swear I will watch him. Like he won't get hurt. Yeah, um, he won't open. That, like, he won't be down that slide on the emergency exit. Yeah, exactly. But there's a lot to see in the galley. Actually, I mean, you start to see all these parts of the plane that you never even, <laughs> yes. you know, because you're um, like going, oh, actually, how would I join the Mile High Club? <laughs> yeah. Well, you'll once you're changing to you know a diaper and in, in there, you'll that it seems that, even yeah. hard. Um, <laughs> that will close off options where you're like, do you know what? I can wait till the hotel. It's going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think um, it's it's so easy to get blocked by. Oh my gosh, that will be so hard. And then yeah. really, it's it's just living. Yes. Yes. And I think it's that thing of, I feel because this one will be about nine months where you sort of, you're out of that sort of phase of, you're starting to kind of enjoy life again and get back into finding a bit of a routine or, you know, I feel like I'll be more sort of confident with my second, hopefully. Um, but yeah, just sort of figuring out. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, well, thank you so much. Um, if people want to find out more, where should they go? What should they do? And who, also, who do you want to connect with? Who would be useful people for you to meet? Oh, well, I like meeting all sorts of people. Um, so yeah, just, I mean, my Instagram is triple passport. Uh, it's because I don't even know if I said this, but my sons hold three passports. They're British, American, and Norwegian. So that's where the triple passport comes from. Um, they have all three nationalities. So we kind of cover how we keep them connected to all three cultures, but then also travel to you know other parts of the world um, and life in London. Um, I, my website is triplepassport.com. 
Um, and then I also have a weekly column with the point sky UK. So that's the point sky.co.uk. And, uh, I do a weekly family Friday column. So on Fridays, I write something about British focused, uh, family travel. Amazing. Well, I absolutely love your stories. And certainly during this pregnancy, when I've been like, I feel so heavy to even go anywhere. Like it's been so nice just to to see the options. And also there is something really beautiful about just seeing bits of the world through kids' eyes as well. And, you know, as adults, you start to really enjoy that again and things that you might have taken for granted because you're always on that like, right, I've got to check in, I've got to do this, that it can be really exciting. And um, yeah, it, I think what you're building is fantastic. So thank you so much for, um, for sharing everything today. I know it will be super useful. Oh, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. See you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And I would love to hear what you thought of the episode and share any takeaways with me. Come and find me across social media at Nikki Raby, or you can visit the podcast page, nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast.